Thank you, Chairman Smith and Ranking Member Johnson for the opportunity to speak about climate change. I'm John Christie, Professor of Atmospheric Science at the University of Alabama in Huntsville and Alabama State Climatologist. I've served in many uh, climate science capacities, including as lead author of the United Nations IPCC. My research might best be described as building data sets from scratch to help us understand what the climate is doing and why. I begin with the chart on display. This particular chart has caused considerable anxiety for the climate establishment who want to believe the climate system is overheating according to the theory of how extra greenhouse gases are supposed to affect it. The message is very simple. The theory does not match the observations as measured independently by both satellites and balloons. With that, attacks on those of us who pay attention to such <coughs> evidence and on the data themselves have been remarkably sophisticated. From congressional investigation of our finances, to well-funded videos, to reporters' inquiries for all of our notes, phone calls, expenses, reimbursements, emails, letters, and so on. At the core of these activities is the belief that someone who does not go along with the climate establishment must be on the payroll of scurrilous organizations. These attacks attempt to persuade people not to consider the data of the bulk atmosphere of the surface to about 50,000 feet. One attack says the satellites do not measure temperature. They do. As my colleague Roy Spencer points out, they measure temperature by emission, which is the same way a doctor measures your body temperature with an ear probe. Another attack says that the vertical fall of the satellites makes the readings unreliable. This problem was corrected 20 years ago for a different measurement, but the measurements shown here, this was never a factor involved. In a similar assertion, the claim is made that there was an error in the correction for the east-west drift of the satellites, but again, that does not apply to the measurements shown here, but to a different layer, and that was fixed 10 years ago. My written testimony goes into more detail about how these attacks on the data are misdirections or simply wrong. They are designed to divert your attention away from the critically important result of how significantly the theoretical impact of greenhouse effect on which policy is based differs from reality. It is a bold strategy on the part of many of the climate establishment to put one's confidence in theoretical models and to attack the observed data. To a scientist, this just doesn't make sense. My written testimony also uh, examines issues <coughs> excuse me, related to the surface temperature data sets. I attempt to make the case that the surface temperature measurements are less effective at con uh, detecting climate change than the bulk atmospheric measurements shown here. First, <clears throat> the variations of the basic physical measurement are not as directly related to greenhouse gas impact as is the upper air. And then there are other issues uh, that affect the surface temperature, uh, such as problems with human development around the stations and huge changes in the way the measurement was actually made through the years. What about the Paris Agreement? No one knows the impact of this agreement because no one knows whether any country will follow through on its voluntary aspirations at all. However, we do know that even so-called green countries like Germany and Japan are today adding to their carbon emissions by building more coal-fired power plants. And the rest of the world, and the rest of the world is moving forward with affordable carbon-based energy. Uh, these present trends of emissions indicate very little will be done because carbon-based energy is the foundation of the world's improving welfare, and I believe this will continue until something even more affordable is discovered. With no certainty on future emissions, I've done a thought experiment. As I note in my written testimony, if the United States had disappeared in 2015, that's no more people, no cars, no industry, nothing, the impact on the climate system would be a tiny few hundredths of a degree over 50 years. And that's if you believe climate models. So to me, it is not scientifically justifiable or economically rational that this nation should establish regulations whose only discernible consequence is an increase in economic pain visited most directly and harshly on the poorest among us. This happens when the scientific process that allegedly underpins regulations lacks objectivity and transparency, and becomes associated with attempts to shut out any evidence that questions the regulation's assumptions. Uh, thank you very much. <clears throat>